In 2023, it has never been a better time to switch to an electric car like the Tesla Model 3. By sales, it's no secret, petrol car sales are the passenger vehicle of choice around the world, minus Norway. But will petrol continue to be the king of the hill around the world? If you're willing to give this video a chance, Tesla is subtly redefining car ownership beyond just CO2 credentials. In fact, I think there are four key reasons why Tesla is redefining car ownership as you know it today, and why it's only a matter of time before it helps make EVs become the new passenger vehicle of choice around the world. Hello YouTubers, and welcome back to another video with me, Adam Well Informed. My channel is dedicated to all things from Tesla news to ownership analysis, and for today's video, why 99% of people will eventually opt for an electric car like the Tesla Model 3 and not for CO2 or zero emissions purposes. Effectively, what is the real reasons why Tesla and EVs will become mainstream? Why will people rush to ditch their petrol motor for a fully electric battery powered vehicle like the world's current best selling car, the Tesla Model Y. Electrification is an open book to reimagine the way that you look at personal transportation. Ultimately, if you haven't already, the reasons when and why you may go fully electric will depend on your wholly unique personal circumstances. However, I'm confident on merit, electrification will deliver a car capable of twisting your arm. So let's reveal what could be that cheeky arm twist for you. But before I do that, please drop me a cheeky like, subscribe, and punch the notification bell. Right, let's push on with the video. Reason number one is one of, if not the biggest driver of going electric. The Tesla Model 3 is more convenient to service and maintain than your petrol or diesel car, period. Why is that? Well, the fundamentals of an electric car is that it's made up of thousands of less parts, and so with less mechanical brake points, there's also less friction between components, which in turn converts into less wear and tear. Don't trust me with that? Well, I even thought I'd ask the Terminator, aka ChatGPT about this, and you may be surprised to learn that. A typical electric motor used in a Tesla has around 20 moving parts, whereas a traditional gasoline engine can have hundreds or even thousands of moving parts. This is because electric motors use magnetic fields to generate motion, while gasoline engines rely on a series of internal combustion processes to generate power. The simplicity of electric motors is one of the reasons why they require less maintenance than gasoline engines, and electric motors don't require oil changes, spark plug replacements, or other routine maintenance tasks that are necessary for gasoline engines. That means that electric cars, including Teslas, have lower maintenance costs and require fewer visits to the mechanic. To the everyday user, do you think that they enjoy arranging for an annual service to visit the garage for one of these hundreds of thousands of moving parts that need to be replaced? I think people generally dread the annual service experience as well as the anticipated costs and that's not once, that's like every year and it progressively gets worse. So what are the service requirements for a Tesla then? There must be some, right? Well, Tesla are so confident in their reliability of its vehicles that they insist on servicing as a as-needed basis. That means that there is a small list of service recommendations that you can do from home, such as topping up your washer fluid and swapping your cabin filters. Effectively, you only need to request a service should you notice a difference or failure occurring. That's if the Tesla vehicle hasn't already noticed the issue via the car data and the integrated sensors, for which it's crazy to think that in 2023 that a car can then self-diagnose a potential issue, and if it does self-diagnose itself, then it will subsequently pre-order the new part in advance to your nearest service center. And all you need to do is book the service appointments via the app. This is truly a futuristic experience, not to mention that Tesla mobile service will come to you and fix it if possible. I've relied on this before whilst working from home and I can assure you it's as smooth as it sounds. The second and maybe most controversial point that I'll make in this video is that home charging a Tesla Model 3 is way more convenient than refueling a fossil fueled car. Here in the UK, two thirds of households have access to off-road parking and so the ability to charge from home is vastly superior to the refueling experience for the everyday driver. Hear me out, ask any EV driver you know and they'll probably say the same. It's a transition to a new driving habit for sure, 
but there is no need to plan for that petrol station visit around your working day. No waiting in a queue for the pump, no issues with the card machine, no giving in to temptation at the kiosk. I literally supercharged five times last year, which means like 96% of my total charging sessions for the year were from home. And let's not forget, this is our sole family car. That means as soon as you get home, you can slap that charging cable in and then the car will automatically charge when I sleep. And primarily when my electricity is the cheapest. Meaning as an EV owner, I can sleep easy. Knowing in the worst case scenario of a full charging session, that's only going to cost me around £3.75. And that would convert into a penny a mile cost. Simply sensational. So not only is the convenience off the charts, the daily running costs is somewhat questionable when you first run them yourself. An ownership fact worth knowing, driving around 16,000 miles cost me around £200 all in. That's a penny a mile in real world mileage. And you can see that dedicated video on the screen now. But seriously, home charging combined with a dedicated EV home charging tariff is a super deadly alternative to driving a petrol car. It's simply not possible for a petrol car to get a penny a mile. It's unimaginable. But thanks to the cheap overnight rates from my EV tariff, details can be found in the description in the video, and just how efficient electric cars, and particularly this Tesla Model 3 is, we can achieve ridiculous running costs in comparison to owning and keeping a petrol motor. Reason number three, which makes electrification and Tesla Model 3 ownership ever so convincing, is that Tesla vehicles are ever more connected to online services. And I spoke about how the software can pick up potential reliability concerns using personalized car data and its sensors. Then they can report back to Tesla and automatically get a replacement part on order. Now, imagine parking your Tesla in a sketchy area and having the comfort of having sentry mode not only active, but also instantly and remotely accessible from anywhere around the world on your mobile. Can't talk about the car's internet connection without talking about the tremendous value of over-the-air software updates. These effectively bring over-the-air goodie bags, which then ultimately draw up new entertainment enhancing features such as Apple Music and new streaming services, all the way to vehicle driving convenience features to enhancing your vehicle's range or even the efficiency or even the charging efficiency. All this through software and did I mention it's free over the air updates from Tesla. Even if there is a software related issue with your car, these can be fixed with a new software update from Tesla. And so you don't need to drive to a service center or garage for a similar reliability update to be fixed by your car manufacturer. I mean, Tesla has been doing this since 2012. For over 10 years now, they've had this capability and awesome features are brought to the car free of charge. For which another benefit of that is that it really does help starve off any new car fever that you normally get when you're bored of your motor. Therefore, this will help keep your car fresh with new features without having to buy a new car. The final reason is simply unarguable. When it comes to official safety ratings, Tesla consistently achieves the highest scores available. Even the lowest probability of injury of any vehicle ever tested by NHTSA at the time of testing. If you have a family, why would you not want to travel in the most safest vehicles available, period? It's the feature you want the most when you least expect it. So why is Tesla uniquely qualified in comparison to a petrol alternative for safety then Adam? Well, according to Tesla, primarily the Tesla Model 3 benefits from its all-electric architecture and powertrain design, which consists of a strong, rigid passenger compartment, fortified battery pack, and overall low center of gravity and these safety fundamentals help to prevent intrusion into the cabin and battery modules reduce rollover risk and distribute crash forces systematically away from the cabin all whilst providing the foundation for our superior front crumple zone that is optimized to absorb energy and crush more efficiently in layman's terms if you were to have a frontal crash you have no engine so the design of the front of the car can factor in a better crumple zone, distribute crash forces, and allows a better weight distribution than a typical ice car. It's not just about crashes though. NCAP also demonstrated its strong safety prevention features too. A brand new prevention feature was included in a software update not too long ago. Do you know what Tesla did? They used their real-time car data 
again, I know, to analyze when and where crashes usually occur with their vehicle fleet. As a result, Tesla can now anticipate an imminent crash via its onboard cameras and then tighten the seatbelts prior to a crash occurring, thus being a preventative measure rather than being a reactive measure in a crash situation. This one step ahead approach is designed to save lives and Tesla are really pushing the limits of possibilities with the platform that they have. Therefore, to wind up this video, I want to conclude by saying after learning all these points, if you're in the market for a new car, why would you pick a petrol car over the Tesla Model 3 or the Tesla Model Y? I have just detailed my four easy points and it has nothing to do with being a zero emission emitting car. It's actually about practicality, safety and convenience. On merit, Tesla is adapting the ownership experience and what to expect for future iterations, redefining what it's like to own a car. No longer do you need to rely on petrol stations being open when you can charge from home or even from work. No longer do you need to schedule and arrange for that annual service appointment. You can have a car that can systematically detect potential issues and eradicate the time to repair all before the matter has crossed your mind. And this is just the start as the ownership experience gets better month by month with new features and add-ons. That is why, as I think it is, why EVs will become mainstream. When everyday petrol drivers understand the cost savings, the convenience, the practicality, most of the hesitation to stick to what you know will ultimately dispense. And buying an EV would then become mainstream, especially when they know the price of a Tesla is now cheaper than their petrol alternatives, even before any financial incentives. Oops. If this video was of some use today, don't be shy. Please let me know in the comments section below if you have changed your perception around the Tesla Model 3 and electric cars. If you're not sure what to comment and you got this far in the video, you can simply drop me the comments. The Tesla EV hype is real and I'll give you a cheeky thumbs up for the support. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share the video with your friends and family. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.